Today we're talking about puzzles. There's all kinds of puzzles at the store. Everywhere you go, there's puzzles. What's a good, better, and best puzzle? We're going to go over that. I'm going to start with the top row with being the best kinds of puzzles that there are. For a young child who's just um, able to handle things and use both hands and you know, they, they might still want to uh, chew on things. These wood puzzles are awesome. There's no paper to it. The paint is intact within the puzzle piece. Um, now, the actual board is a different story. You don't want them chewing on that. But these are all wood and really good puzzle. So it's a 3D puzzle. Like I said, it's made out of wood, very durable. The board is particle board type of wood with a paper on top of it, uh, laminate. And so um, this is really good puzzle pieces for the child to be able to handle and grasp. And they'll even, you know, stand up if you have it level. So uh, they can do imaginary play, but everything looks realistic. So you have a train, you know, I, I don't know, a blue train, maybe not so much, but the fire um, truck the school bus, sailboat, the boat. Things look realistic for the most part. So puzzles like this are really good, high quality. When they have more dexterity and fine motor control, they can actually use knobbed puzzle pieces, which is great. It teaches them to pinch. It, it's giving them a skill and um, honing their fine motor skills. This puzzle it has a speaker it's by Melissa and Doug. But when you um, connect the puzzle piece, it makes the sound of the animal. So this is kind of a fun puzzle. It's a little more advanced than most and also more costly. So it has like a sensor here and that has like a, a magnet here and when it does that it releases the sound. So it's a fun puzzle, a little more costly, not necessary, but actually a good teaching uh, educational puzzle. This one is also a knobbed puzzle. It does not have sound but it has the picture on the bottom. Instead of just the shape, it's a matching game. So they can um, easily do this one, um, whereas some puzzles do not have the picture underneath here, and it's strictly by shape. So this is a good puzzle. It's also made of wood. Now, this puzzle is a little bit cheaper. It's kind of made out of uh, a thin piece of wood with particle wood underneath it. It has a little gap for the child to grasp it. Um, and it does have the picture with the word underneath it. So they can do matching, and then you can also show them the word. So, the lion. And then as they can spell, it, it, this has longevity to be able to show the actual letters. Um, now, crocodile is a long word, so that would be a long time from now. So you would put the puzzle up and bring it out as they grow into those words. But crocodile, d deer. So you could use this puzzle for teaching, um, you know, by sight, uh, matching, and then you could teach the sound of the animal. Uh, I don't know, camel sound um, or rhino sound. But if there is a sound to the animal, like a monkey or gorilla, <laughs> however you want to do it, lion roar. And so um, this has longevity because they will not be able to write, you know, some of these words for some time. So you could put it out and bring it back. Now the puzzle, it has, it moves around. It's not super tight, but I like this little finger area that you can grasp it so you don't tear up the puzzle. So that's a good one. This one has farm animals, so it's closer to home. I live in Texas, so if there are animals that they could actually go and visit, a petting zoo or um, anything where they can touch and feel and hear them 
um, I would start with these first. Now this puzzle I bought second hand and I'm missing one. It's, it's the best if you don't present something frustrating where there's a puzzle piece missing. However, um, this is a really good puzzle and it has the little finger holes, it has the words and a matching capability and I got it second hand for uh, pennies. And so um, I wouldn't throw it away and I would present it to my child, but here I might come up with something that would be able to match with that um, or just leave it blank and, and black that out. So, um, you know, this is a really good puzzle. Um, it has basic animals that you can teach sounds, talk about a tractor and a farm and so on. So really good puzzle. And the second level, uh, they're very cheap puzzles. You can get at a dollar store or whatever. Um, you can use them. They are not high quality and they do not have a lot of longevity. Um, if you have a younger child that might chew on the pieces, you know, you're going to have issues because um, if water hits it, it will do like this. It will buckle up and not function as a puzzle. I would not throw this away. I would actually take these puzzle pieces, probably throw this part away, or use it for an art project. Um, but these puzzle pieces, you can still teach emotions. Sad, happy, silly. This one has kind of gunk on it. It's a bummer. I'm scared. So if you don't have anything, or if you, you want to continue to use it, put these in a basket, and you can talk about feelings and emotions. And then you can use uh, the back part for an art project of some sort or mounting pictures uh, from magazines because you need uh, to mount it to something sturdy. So recycle this and put these in a basket and keep using them. Um, a puzzle that presents the parts of the body. That is a good first language starter. Um, anything that you can start teaching them uh, body parts and <clears throat> how to articulate my head hurts, my arm hurts, things like that. So, and emotions, I feel sad. So those are very, very good beginning language. But these puzzles, <clears throat> they don't have very much longevity and, um, you know, they're very cheap. However, they do the job and if you only have one child or you don't care about longevity, these are fine. You can find them at the dollar store. Um, the way that I talk about teaching language, we don't do A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. Uh, we start in uh, letter groups. However, this is still fun. A apple. This is the symbol. This is the object. Now, or this is, you know, this uh, symbol for A. And it, it's uppercase. So this is not an early puzzle. It's a later puzzle. But you could use it for teaching language like K, K, Cat. B, b, ball, and so on. Uh, this to me is way too car cartoony. You want to stay with the more realistic look and not a cartoony where they're trying to make, you know, stars and moon and people looking. Um, so this is not realistic. I, I wouldn't like this one at all. Um, I just not buy this stick with something that's concrete, not abstract. Now a tiger does look like that. A seal, you know, they do have them in circuses, but um, this is at least a little more realistic where, you know, the elephant is gray at least. Now this puzzle is missing a piece and it's very cartoony. Um, not realistic. There's no such thing as a unicorn. Castles are not pink, and, you know, princesses are pretty rare, but, <clears throat> and these are pretty advanced words. I would just leave this one at the store. If you find puzzle pieces, but you don't have the board, um, you can put them in baskets and still use them to teach, you know, police car, fire truck, t truck, you know, road, r road, and, you know, traffic light. Um, so you could put the puzzle pieces in here. 
and, and talk about them and teach them. You don't have to throw them away. And here, puzzle pieces are magnetic. Now, I found this one, but it, I didn't have the board. So you can get a magnetic board that they could have in their room, or you can put them on the refrigerator and let them play with them. So they can see, you know, play around with a farm. There's a barn in here, um, and there's equipment for a farm that you can talk about. But you can put them on the lower level of your refrigerator and create an educational space. And while you're cooking, you could have them name these, and if they didn't know it, you could go over it with them while you cook. And this is the same thing. They're magnets on here. It is by Melissa and Doug, I believe. Yes, vehicle magnets. So there's all kinds of vehicles. So airplane. So talking about transportation, how to get, get around. And these are plastic. Um, you know, they're a little bit more abstract. They're not realistic, but they will still work and still play on the refrigerator. So you can rotate them out and keep the material, um, you know, fresh. And that's about puzzles. Hopefully that was helpful.